Today we're going to teach you how to play our new game, The Real Truth, developed by Goliath Games and invented by Daryl Andrews. Wait a second, we made a game? We sure did, Kissel. <laughs> and everyone is going to want to play because it's pretty awesome. You're, you're going to laugh, you'll fall in love, make friends, and other things that actually don't really matter in this hologram universe. Wait, wait a second, dude. Did you say hologram? Are we? Oh, dude, am I a hologram? Am I even real? You're only real in the fact that you have to pay taxes. <laughs> We don't have enough time to answer that. So back to the game. In the real truth, you are a truth seeker taking on the personality of a hidden identity to travel the globe while trying to score the most victory points by breaking news of real conspiracies while capturing creatures and gathering a following of your, uh, how you say, your, uh, your peers, right? Yes, they're peers. Now let's get started by introducing you to the game pieces. There are four categories in the game. Terrestrial, spectral, men in black, Alien. The terrestrial category is represented by the color red and this Sasquatch. And the resources in this category are tracks. Moving on, Spectral is represented by the color blue and a phantom. And its resources is an EVP, an electronic voice phenomenon. I'm very surprised you said that correctly. Thank you. The men in black are represented by this grayish color. And they're an agent, obviously, and have documents for resources. And finally, aliens are green and represented by, you guessed it, aliens. Mm -hmm. Their resource is plasma. You'll notice the phantom has a translucent finish, and the alien has a special glow-in-the-dark look. So that's for the you collectors out there. <laughs> that's true, but if we turn off the lights, they won't be able to see us, and I'm too pretty to be in the dark. I actually am very scared of you in the dark. Fantastic. Because that's when you can't see what you can do. <laughs> <laughs> to set up the game, you'll want to unfold your absolutely flat, true map of the planet Earth and line it up. All of the yellow lines should be touching to create the North Pole. Then choose a dealer. I will be the dealer. All right, fine. First, the dealer will place 12 of the followers at random on the triangle spaces scattered across the board. The other followers can be set aside in the plastic supply in the game box for now. Then each player gets their very own mat with two matching movers. So shiny. Very shiny. Next are the movement cards. The advanced movement cards and the default movement cards can be distinguished by the header at the top of the card. Separate the advanced from the default, then shuffle the advanced and place a stack of five advanced movement cards beside every south pole in a face-up stack. Every player gets a complete set of default movement cards, including one of each type. Players use two of these to move around the board each round and put them in a discard pile. The reset card allows them to pick up the movement cards they've used and adjust their alignment up to two spaces, which is important, but I'll get to that later. Then you'll want to shuffle the deck of mission cards and place them face down above the North Pole. Draw three and place them face up next to the deck to form a market. Do I get a mission card? Actually, each player gets three mission cards during setup, but you won't get to keep all three, so don't get too excited. Ah! <laughs> The creature cards should be kept in their separate categories. They don't play nice with each other. Just shuffle each creature deck and put them face down around the game board. Now it's time to place our creature minis. Flip the topmost card of each creature deck to figure out which creatures will be active on the game board. The number on the card shows their spawn location, and all you have to do is place the right mini on the right number. Simple. Simple. I think this Men in Black mini is is watching me. I feel it, the heat of it. It's a, it's a cypher knot, you know? Well, it probably is, and where there's a Men in Black, there are suspicious documents. Yep. Which is why every player gets one of each resources to start the game. You can tuck your resources on the right side of your player mat. Then you'll want to randomly deal a starter token to each player and have the dealer hand out two secret identity folders to each player. Whoa, cool. I'm a ghost hunter. It's, a supp it's supposed to be a secret. Uh, You're ruining this. Dang it. Put it back and choose a different one. Finally, you'll need to shovel the event cards. These cards help determine how long the game goes. So the number of event cards you'll use will depend on how many players you have. The info is in your instruction manual, but you don't have to follow it. In fact, you can remove up to two event cards to make the game go faster if you want to ditch your friends as soon as possible. Nice. Once you've decided how many event cards to use, place them face down near the bottom of the game board. Hey, uh, what do I do with this cool stuff on my player mat? Thank you for the reminder. Let's talk about the mat and how you are going to play the game. 
To discover that, you'll have to figure out what you want to be and what missions you want to take on. Everyone has to look over their two secret identities and their three mission cards and choose which identity and which two mission cards they want. The identity you don't choose can go back in the box, and the other mission should be placed randomly in the mission deck. Does it matter what identity I choose? Because I think being an anarchist sounds pretty sweet, and there's no rules, and there's no bosses. Well, each secret identity has different targets, which can earn you additional victories points at the end of the game. Some secret identities have bonuses for completing missions in different categories, like the detective earns plus two VP for every mission completed in the alien or terrestrial categories. Some even let you choose what missions you want victory points for. Not every secret identity is connected to the missions, though. Some want you to collect advanced movement cards or change your alignment. Wait, what? Alignment? What's that? The starter token you received tells you where to place your movers. One goes on the alignment track on your player map, and the other mover goes to the starting location on the board. Okay, so with this starter token, I would put one mover on the blue eight on the board, and the other mover on my player mat's alignment track, where it says four. Exactly. You'll also want to keep the two mission cards you selected on the incomplete side of your mat and keep your secret identity a secret this time and mm. tuck it in its place at the top of the mat. Fine, I'll keep it a secret, but mine is definitely the best. Whatever, not a chance. Even if you're a disavowed agent, I still will win. Playing the game. Hey guys, no one's winning anything yet. We're here to find the truth, so you ready to expose some conspiracies? Absolutely! I've always been a pretty popular fella, so I'm sure I'll have plenty of followers in no time. <coughs> hey, what? You guys don't think I'm popular? Come on! Mostly people looking for free drinks at the bar. <laughs> yeah. I think it's time to play The Real Truth. All right, fine. How do we start? The first player in each round will take the first player token, and it's their responsibility to flip over an event card and place it face up on the board. Event cards can apply to just that round, or the entire game, and it might be beneficial, like <coughs> extra resources for everyone, or it could cause issues, like not being able to pass one of the polls. Players can push or capture creatures, complete missions, and collect as many followers and resources as they are able to during their turn. Actions can be done in any order, and when a player finishes their turn, gameplay will pass clockwise. Players can only capture a total of four creatures per round, one for each type. The player who begins the next round will need to spawn any new creatures from that deck by flipping over a new creature card face up and placing its matching mini on the corresponding space. What happens if it lands on me? Ah, don't worry. If a creature spawns on the same space as a player, they're immune to it. And why would I be immune to it? Well, as you're moving around the board, you can pass or even share a space with another player. But if you encounter a creature, you must stop and either capture it or lose two resources as a penalty. Whoa, what is this? A toll? That's good to know. <laughs> How do I capture one? Well, that takes resources, which is why you really don't want to lose them. But even if you have enough resources to capture the creature, your alignment has to be within one plus or minus of the creature's alignment. So the alignment on my player mat has to be within one of the creatures and I need the right resources? I can see why I might want to avoid them until I'm ready. You're right. You'll want to be strategic with how you move around the board, but your opponents might push a creature into your space. Why are we pushing these creatures? What? Well, yep. Certain movement cards or abilities allow players to push creatures on the game board, which could force you to either capture one or pay a penalty, even if you were trying to avoid it. Okay, I see how it is. We're not really working together to reveal the truth to the world. We're sabotaging each other along the way. How else am I supposed to win? <laughs> Anyway... As I mentioned before, you've got your set of movement cards, which allow you to move to a certain number of spaces around the board. Now, on your turn, you have to play two movement cards and leave them face up in a discard pile in front of you. These movement cards are not accessible again until you play the reset card. You said there are special abilities that could allow you to play more than two, right? That's true. But let's first talk about why you might want some extra movement. When you're moving around the board, you'll land on different spaces, which align with different categories. For example, if you played a three movement card and went here and here and here, you'd get matching resources. One EVP for landing on a spectral, one document from the Men in Black, and one plasma from the alien space. So we can plan our path to a creature to get the final resources we need. Nice. Exactly. And you can play your reset card as one of your movement cards to adjust your alignment, which you might need to do 
to capture a creature. Let me give you an example. Here I have two cards in my discard pile because I played them on my last turn. So on this turn, I'm going to start with my reset card, which lets me change my alignment to spaces for the two cards I played, and then I pick them back up. Now for my second movement card, I can play anything in my hand, including those ones I just picked back up. That could help me if the creature I want to reach is farther away than I can reach with the movement cards in my hand, or if I need to adjust my alignment first. All right, that makes sense. Now, other than the fact that I've always wanted to own a chupacabra, what does capturing them do for us? Depends. Every creature has their special ability or bonus action that can let you move more, teleport, swap resources, or mission cards. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff these cryptids can do. So they're probably going to help me win, but to be honest, I kind of want to capture them for a different reason. Have you seen the artwork on these? Freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. Yep, and it's all custom. Only the best for our fans and our listeners. Well, speaking of fans, how do we collect followers? The follower spaces are not spaces for players. Movers will hop over them, but as you're passing over them during your move, if your alignment is equal to or greater than the number on the follower token, you can collect it. If my alignment is less than the number on the token, I have to leave it? Yes. Just another reason why manipulating your alignment throughout the game is going to be necessary, because each follower is worth one victory point at the end of the game. If a follower is collected, the dealer should immediately replace it with a new follower from the ones set aside until there are no followers left. Wait, 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 wait. So I get that we can play our movement cards to move around the board, collect resources and followers, try to capture creatures. But what about missions? Missions are similar to creatures in that you have to be able to pay the resource cost to complete them. When you're ready, you have to travel to the go-to location shown on the card. Even if the movement card you play would take you past the mission location, you can stop on the correct space before finishing your move. On the space, you can turn the resources to complete the mission and move your mission to the completed side of your player map. When you complete a mission, you can immediately collect the rewards it lists, such as resources or alignment changes but victory points are not calculated until the end of the game. Then I grab a new mission card? No! You <laughs> only get a new mission card by using a special ability or event, or by passing through the North Pole. Oh, yeah, then uh, what do the poles do? Well, like I said, passing over the North Pole allows you to pick up a new mission card as long as you don't already have four uncompleted missions in progress. The South Pole is even more fun. When a player travels to any of the four South Pole spaces, they get to collect the topmost advanced movement card from that stack. Oh, snap! So we get to keep it! Yes, and there's no limit to how many times a player can visit the South Pole to collect advanced movement cards. But you'll need to be strategic so you don't miss opportunities elsewhere on the board. These advanced movement cards can add more moves to your turn, move creatures farther, and even allow you to teleport across the map. I'm sure you guys see how many different strategies you can take to win this game. And since every round starts with a new event card, you never know what to expect. That's right. A round ends after every player has taken their turn. Any events that were in effect for this round only end, and the first player of that round passes the first player token clockwise, so the next round can begin. When the last event card is flipped and all players complete their turns for that round, the game is over. And it's time to add up your victory points! Okay, so we get one point for each follower. Yep, and the completed missions, you get the victory points listed in the rewards, as well as any bonuses you might have from your secret identity. So, that's when we can reveal our secret identity. Yes, uh, this is the time you tell people what you were, because it might give you bonuses towards completed missions or certain alignments. The creatures you've captured give you victory points as well. You get one VP for each creature, and then a bonus based on how many categories you were able to capture during the game. For example, if you captured two alien creatures, one spectral and one terrestrial, you would have four VP for capturing four creatures, but you would also get a bonus of three VP for collecting three different categories of creature for a total of seven VP. The player with the most victory points at the end of the game wins! But remember... You can't take victory points with you to the grave. <laughs> <laughs>